Hello there, and uh, very welcome to Euronet Plus Guest of the Week. Uh, our Guest of the Week is a Portuguese writer and historian, and also a member of the European Parliament, Mr. Rui Tavares. Welcome. Good morning. Thanks for having me. We are going to um, talk about the so-called Troika, mm -hmm. um, the European Commission, the ECB and the IMF, uh, institutions that really have been pumping up uh, a lot of money into uh, crisis hit countries in Europe like Portugal, but also institutions that have been heavily criticized lately uh, for being not very transparent, for uh, doing poor economic forecasts, uh, and also not taking into account uh, social uh, aspects of their, their uh, measures. And you actually wrote an article uh, just recently in Portuguese uh, paper Publico, uh, asking yourself whether the Troika was in fact illegal so uh, would you say that the Troika is illegal? Well, I would say that we have uh, many parts, at least three, to what I think is a very open question, and that should be, should be asked, which is the question of the legality itself of, of the Troika. First of all, it's, is the Troika essentially legal from the point of view of the treaties? If you give decisional powers to an institution or to an inter-institution, as it is this case, well, you need to have a legal basis. Uh, we don't have an agreement uh, of the EU per se with the IMF uh, that has been ratified by all the member states to do this. Uh, we have then another question, which is the question of the, the legality of the mission of the, of the Troika, or at least of the goals that the Troika has announced for the, for the Troika countries. Uh, if you go to Article 3 of the Treaty on the European Union, you have the objectives of the Union, which are, among others, full employment, cohesion, uh, and, and economic... Solidarity ec between the EU members. E economic solidarity between the EU members, but that you could, in a sense, construe that it is indeed solidarity be between the EU members, but you have uh, economic development. Well, uh, and you, you have been conducting an experiment in these uh, Troika countries that has given us high rates of, an, of unemployment, that has given, uh, given us less cohesion, less equality, which is not only an objective of the Union, but also a value of, of the Union. So is what so the Troika... Troika did more bad than good? I think that the Troika, with, more two, with, with two Union institutions that are bound to the values and objectives of the Union, has ended up, and this has to, to be recognized, having at least short to medium-term effects that are detrimental to the values and objectives of the Union. And that has not been taken into account because people have uh, uh, gotten used to the idea that you have to take very much care of, you know, the fiscal compact or other parts of the treaties, but the things that you have in the, fir in the very first articles of, of the treaties that give us a sense of what the union is, you can kind of, of disregard. I don't think you should disregard it. I think it's law, it's law of the union. Then you have the, 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 the third question, which is more of a technical one, is that many of the forecasts of the Troika, many, that's the kind of things that the Econ Committee of the European Parliament is now looking into, have uh, uh, misfired. So the question then is, who pays for the errors? Because these errors, have taken a toll in our countries in terms of mass immigration of young people, highly highly formed, highly skilled, highly educated young people, uh, you know, less access to, 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 to health. Uh, in a few years, I don't know what we'll see of the effects of the Troika, but maybe, uh, uh, you know, uh, you less life critics, expectancy, uh, etc. been presented towards the Troika. You agree with all this, that it's... Uh... Yeah, well, I, I think that we will see, we already see more disease, less people being treated in hospitals, so we'll see less, less life expectancy. Uh, we may even see more suicide rates. Of course, we see lots of families in distress. We know that the, the consequences of this uh, are there for generations. For instance, if you have just finished your degree, you don't get a job, you will be, when the next cohort of, of people who have finished their degrees uh, enters the labor market, you will, you will already be disadvantaged. So these are things that, uh, you know, some, somebody will pay for it, uh, for it. I don't want the Greek people, the, 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 the Portuguese youngsters, the, the, the old el el elderly people in Ireland or Cyprus to pay for it. But the, the, the fact that you have um, non-elected EU officials deciding on measures in countries like Portugal, is it also a democracy problem, you think? Well, I think that one has to admit that our governments have asked for a bailout. And uh, so in that sense, 
uh, it was a sovereign act or of the parliaments and the governments of these countries to ask for a bailout. And this is the use of, the use on which take the, the decision, not the Troika. Yeah, that, then the that's another member. question which are the counter arguments for the Troika. Let me first, you know, uh, 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 you know, follow this path of it is a democratic act of these countries, uh, uh, of their parliaments and their governments. But it was taken, this, the, the decision to ask for a bailout was taken in a state of necessity. And it does not justify everything that happens. So if you're, in, you know, alone by night at the side of the road, you, you ask for help. And some, somebody helps you. But this person also, you know, uh, uh, does something illegal or uh, also mistreats you or aggresses you. Well, it is not justified. It's true that you have asked for help. It's true that Portugal has asked for a bailout. Greece has asked for a bailout. But that does not justify that everything that happens is under the bailout is so legal. So the Troika mistreated the countries. We asked for a countries. bailout to the EU. The EU has values and has objectives that we have signed up to. And it has obligations of cohesion and solidarity. For it. Some of them would have been very easy to, 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 uh, uh, to fulfill. For, for actually, the, the, the work of the Troika isn't that also an act of solidarity because there are other Euro member states paying for... Uh, this bailout, like yeah. Germany, for instance. Yeah, and, and, and of course, what, what, uh, uh, the, the money that people lend to you uh, in, in, the, in the framework of, of the treaties must be paid back. But, you know, if we do something like uh, what uh, John Maynard Keynes suggested, you know, already in, in Bretton Woods, that, when, uh, that the debtor countries can, you know, take longer to pay uh, to the countries who have surpluses, like Germany now has, and now finally mm. people have realized that this is a problem. Germany does not need the money back now. They have surpluses. So you're not, uh, nobody is coming worse off, for instance, if Portugal has more time to pay, or if we can discriminate amongst uh, uh, our lenders, and we go and we first pay to the ones who don't have surpluses and need the money, and only later on we pay to the other ones. This is, I'm not saying anything revolutionary, this is uh, at the core of the discussions of the, you know, the stability of the financial system after the Second World War. The European the, the, this, is, this is solidarity that does not uh, uh, make any, uh, anyone worse off and that pays what, what is due, mm -hmm. but, you know, so, but solidarity is fulfilled anyway. Solidarity appears 12, time in, 12, 12 times in the treaties. It's, it's time that the... The European the Parliament States. is to launch an inquiry um, into the, the, the work mm -hmm. of the Troika. Two executive of, officials of the Troika, Mr. Uh, Mazur and Mr. De, De Rose, um, they attended last week an hearing at the European Parliament and they admitted that uh, concerning Greece, uh, their economic forecasts were wrong mm -hmm. because they underestimate... Uh, the consequence of austerity austerity policy. Well, I would say, for your side, nothing more to say, mm -hmm. but it took three years to admit it. Yes, and then there will be a shifting of responsibilities between the Troika and the Eurogroup, the points that you were mentioning a, a couple of minutes uh, before. I think that uh, while this uh, new pressure on the Troika, that I think we, it has took uh, it, it took us a while to react. I think that people were a little bit, uh, you know, um, stunned by what happened during the crisis. And now people are waking up, looking at the Troika, seeing what kind of a bizarre beast in union terms this they is, create. what they have done, what 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 the, the, what they have created, and then people are making questions. And more and more you'll hear from the Commission and the Council, well, but the Troika is nothing. The Troika actually does not have decisional powers. Who makes the decisions is, the is the Eurogroup. So the, 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 the staff of the technical staff of the Troika will say, yes, we have failed our forecasts, but the political responsibility lies with the Eurogroup. That you know, should also take into account the possibility that not all forecasts are, are good. Also, because we have seen this is a trend, it's not one failed forecast. forecast. When it comes to the forecast, what the uh, ECB, for instance, said in the parliament was that uh, these forecasts may have, have failed just because countries like Portugal haven't fulfilled the the um, reforms uh, in a pace that was agreed upon. Well, yeah, but they can they, they may also have failed because precisely the measures were implemented. Portugal, in that in that sense, it's it's maybe the the. the the best, uh, uh, I say it, it's a, 
maybe tragically the best guinea pig of 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 the troika portugal has done has wanted to 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 be the best you know pupil in the in the classroom we have implemented everything that that was asked and sometimes our our government even wanted to go further than what the troika asked and yet we have had a, a recessive spiral and then there's a big question in portugal that maybe people outside don't know about which is with the 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 uh, with the constitutional courts rejecting some of the measures of the troika and putting a, a backstop, so to say, to... to this is particular to, for, the Portugal, for yeah, Portugal. Yeah, yeah, but there's an interesting thing. The, the, the recession was not so big and it has, in some sense, been reversed, but because in, in the year where troika measures didn't go as far. So there will be a discussion and the economists will disagree. Some will say Portugal... Uh, hasn't been lifted out of the crisis because they haven't done enough. And some will say precisely when Portugal couldn't manage because of its own constitution to, uh, uh, you know, happily do as much as the Troika wanted, things have improved. That's the economical question. That's the economic question. But then the political and legal question in union terms is, is not that you have to have blind faith in one kind of forecast or another kind of forecast, the, the, the Keynesians or the Austrians. You have to take into account that forecasts can fail and you have to have preventive measures to not let people suffer because of failed forecasts. And this is for people to have political you know, intelligence, political wisdom, and I will, I will even say among Europeans, even kindness of one country towards another to, you know, not have blind trust in technocracy, not implement things this way. Because, that, uh, because the Eurogroup, in the Eurogroup, we have politicians. And these politicians to, have, to to, have to follow values that we have in the treaties. Can we talk to finish about the private consultancies? They play a very strange role, particularly in, in Cyprus. They receive a big amount of money for their uh, advising, which is quite, well, let's say, surprising. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't, I don't have much to say about that. I'm not very much into that subject. But what I can tell you, and I think it's, it's a, a, a bit of a news, is that uh, not even you have that void of political. Uh, but who know, decided to, to, to? Yeah, you have a void of political legitimacy that is both. that that is filled in by uh, sometimes special interests. You also have another uh, very strange effect, which is I've just seen, you know, a, a report in the Regi Committee of the of the Parliament, where you allocate extra money for youth unemployment to France, to Italy, and Spain, but not to Portugal, not to Greece. And Spain is actually of these three countries one who gets the less money, and why? Because you needed to have, uh, you know, a compensation to France because of the British rebate. So you have, on the one hand, this is your you know, <laughs> your private consultancies doing lots of the work that should be done New by York politicians. Private consultancies, and then, and then you have you have uh, 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 politicians doing, you know, uh, just interest bargaining mm -hmm. in the council, not taking into account actually who has the more youth and employment and should get money for this. Instead, you give. Uh, European social fund money to France because France, of course, is mad that the British are still getting their rebate. Mm. It's the I want my money back mentality in Europe and that's that's killing us, I think. But if you go back uh, to Portugal before we finish off, mm -hmm. um, it, when Portugal did, as you said, uh, ask for, for help, mm -hmm. um, it was Portugal's own decision uh, and they did receive 78 billion euros in, in May 2011 during three years. Mm. Um, how much is... Portugal's own responsibility in all this, would you say? Well, I think that all our uh, all our countries have problems. I would say I, I was going to say all, all our problems have countries. It's also true. Uh, you go to France, you go to Germany. Every you know, now everybody says that uh, you know uh, you have inflexible labor markets in Portugal. You also have them in other countries. Of course, you look more to Portugal because you have just borrowed them the money. So you know you have. Uh, you, I would say, Germany, Finland, etc., Austria, take a longer look at Portugal and less at their own problems. But I think that you you, you have a, a history of uh, cronyism in some of these countries. You have um, corruption. You have poc big pockets of corruption in these countries. You have what I think it's maybe the biggest problem, which is tax evasion. And in this problem, everybody participates. Portugal loses every year or, well, no, not lose. Let's say 30 billion gets transferred from po for, from Portugal also to the Portugal. Netherlands every year, mm -hmm. and that that is our own our own entrepreneurs, our own our big companies. The 20 biggest of our companies all have their uh, you know uh, uh, 
fictional headquarters in the Netherlands and pay you know, very few of their taxes there. It's, uh, they have names and addresses and they are Portuguese uh, people and, 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 and uh, stock owners. Uh, so there is a, a societal uh, and also governmental responsibility in Portugal. If this tax money would stay in Portugal, we wouldn't have needed a bailout. We lost from the Greek bailout to the Portuguese bailout 78 billion only in one year in you know uh, money transfers to other uh, countries of the union so our banks were not solvable and that was what what finally did it so there's lots of problems to solve some need to be solved at at the local level but i think that you need uh, um i would say i i my opinion is that we need a kind of a Tennessee Valley Authority-like agency, like Roosevelt did for the United States, so a federal agency with a regional so focus. There are still a lot of things that, to do also, also in, in to, Portugal. To, to change our export profile that was completely swamped by Chinese exports in the last years. So it's it's a multifaceted problem that I think would have to be solved with a focused look also from the Union, what I call a Ulysses agency for the countries of the South. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Well, uh, Rui Tavares, for being with us thank today. Thank you very much and for Thank you to me. all our thank listeners. And thank viewers. you.